All right, you guys. Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Chef Dean Max. Spaghetti squash. It's holiday time. Time for these pumpkins, for these squash to come into our life and give us some wonderful flavor. So I've got this great spaghetti squash dish, spaghetti squash bolognese. So we're going to make it feel like we're eating actual pasta, but it's really this spaghetti squash and it's super fantastic. You're going to love it. Stay with me. Click subscribe if you're not doing that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and ring that bell and I'll send you new stuff I have coming up. So I'll see you back in a second. Okay guys, we're back. I'm gonna set this squash down for a second because what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cut some stuff up. I wanna get a, I got a nice pot on. Now this pot's gonna be for my bolognese. So my bolognese is gonna be with mushrooms. That's gonna be our meat. It's gonna be a vegetarian dish. Uh, for those of those people that come into your house during the holidays, this is a great side dish to have for vegetarians, okay? Um, so it's along the same lines of having a, uh, a meat where you're gonna have that meaty flavor from the mushroom be uh, what goes into this. And we're still gonna use onions, carrots, celery. So let me get those started right now. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna put some extra, extra virgin olive oil in my warming pan here. And I give it a good amount because extra virgin olive oil is really nice like that. Now I've got some garlic here, you can see. And I've already sliced some up and I've got three cloves. And then I've got this one. I'll just show you how simply we slice that, right? Keeping your fingers uh, away so you don't get that cut okay and then the end little piece like there we'll just discard that okay and then these beautiful pieces of garlic are going to go right into our oil and they're going to fry in there and that's what we're looking to do so you can see we're going to put those in there to fry up okay now i have some calabrian chili now calabrian chili is a, a spicy chili like chili flakes basically from italy um it's very spicy. The oil in here is spicy too. So I'm going to show you. I can put that much. I put one. This is what they look like if you want to see what they look like. You see that? Or you see like here? It's like a little red chili. So you want to wash your hands after you use this too because it's spicy. So I'm going to make mine a little spicy. I think three chilies is going to be good. Four, actually three and a half, four. Okay, this oil in this is very spicy too. So sometimes you can just use oil if you want. So if you don't have this, you're gonna use just red chili flakes because these, that's what the, uh, in Italy, they'll dry the red chili flakes from these. So you're really just, that's what you're getting anyway. So you can see how I just julienne this up like this. And we're gonna put this right into our, uh, our olive oil and garlic mixture, and that's gonna be, um, see this like this? And then I'll come back this way and chop it a little smaller. Now you see those little seeds in there? Those look just like the Italian chili flakes you use, right? So let's put that in there. So you can see it looks like that's a full teaspoon of chili, okay? Now I gotta wash this because make sure this is really, can be burning hot on your eyes if you touch your eyes, so wash your hands really good, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, I'm just gonna wipe this cutting board down a little bit. Okay, to get see those oils that are on there, get those off. Okay, now while this, uh, this kind of toasts in here, I'll stir the chili around. You see how I stir that around nicely, right? And I don't want to move these garlic too much. I just want them to toast in that oil really nice. While we're doing that, I gotta season it so we don't forget to do that. We'll put a little salt, a tablespoon of salt in there. And then we're gonna put some pepper. Now I put some black pepper. You have the spicy pepper, so you don't really need too much pepper. It's just a little bit, okay? Now while we do this, I'm gonna show you how we get our onions, carrots, and celery ready because a nice bolognese always has a good mirepoix in it. So I take an onion. I've already got some diced up, but I'm gonna show you how I do this. I use one full onion. This is half, and I've already cut up half over my bowl over here, okay? See, but I'm gonna cutting those down in thin strips like this, right? And then I'm gonna cut back at, a, at an angle, okay? And I'm gonna cut these like thin kind of strips back like horizontal cuts. You, this you're coming at your fingers so you want to be really careful uh, not to cut all the way through to go gentle and not cut yourself, okay? Now it's ready to go. So now this is getting kind of toasty. See my garlic? It's getting toasty and so is my chilies. Now I want to add in my mushrooms, okay? So we're going to add in the mushrooms and I can just poke those down. Now 
If you prefer having your mushrooms chopped up, you can do that. I kind of like having the nice big chunks of mushrooms in this uh, bolognese, but uh, you can you can cut them really small if you want. You can use different mushrooms. These are creminis. You could use oyster mushrooms. You could use beautiful mushrooms that you have in season. Chanterelles, really specialty fall mushrooms are nice if you can find those. Some of you are in areas where you can actually go and hike and look for the mushrooms. So those are great if you can do that. Now with this, I'm just gonna cut the onions down like this. Okay, so you can see how beautiful this like mirepoix is, right? Uh, or this little mince of uh, onion, okay? So I've got that, I'll use this for something else. I don't want to waste it though, that's for sure. Okay, and then I've got a carrot. So the carrot, I'm going to show you, it's a round carrot. I'm going to just slice it down. Okay, so just slicing the carrot down. You've got to be very careful because the carrot wants to roll around and I don't like cutting stuff when it's rolling around. So be careful, just as long as you're conscious of it, you're fine, okay? Now, you want to just jul what we call julienne, which is just to cut these thin strips going back the other way. And these are flat, and make sure your cutting board is not rocking like that. Sometimes I put a towel under my cutting board and this towel just doesn't seem like it's adjusted properly. But you should always keep like some type of paper towel or something under it, okay? Then I come back and I turn it the other way and I cut it down like this. And you see what we get? We get this nice brunoise, what we call a brunoise, right? And I just keep going, cutting my carrots through until they're all chopped, right? Beautiful. Now the same thing with the celery. I have a celery stalk. I want to cut it in half to make it easier to work with. And then I'm going to cut it into these long, thin strips, right? So we've got one, two, you know, four times like that. It looks, seems like it's the right uh, measurement, right? And then again, we turn it sideways like this. So we've got the strips one way. Now we turn them the other way and we come back and we've cut, okay? For those of you who cook a lot, you know how to do this um, and that's it. Okay, so you've got this going, okay? Now, I wanna make sure I don't burn anything. I wanna sear these up. Now there's not a lot of water in these mushrooms. There's a little bit, but not a lot. So we wanna put our veg in there now. So here, I, you can see I've got, I've got onions. We've got one onion, three carrots, and uh, half a, a bulb of celery, or half of a whole piece of celery. So it's probably like four stalks, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is a lot of veg. Why are we going veg heavy? We're going veg heavy because um, the vegetables are, uh, the vegetables are our base. You know, this is a vegetarian, there's no meat in this. Normally you would have 80% meat and only 20% vegetable. But because our vegetables are, you know, what we're trying to feature here, we're gonna go we're gonna go with uh, you know, 50% uh, of our vegetables and then we're gonna have our tomato, okay? Our tomato product. So it's a lot of mushrooms, onions, carrots, and celery. Now with this, we're gonna saute this down, okay? You can see this is cooking nicely here, right? And I just wanna make sure. Now what happens when you put the onions and the celery in there, there's a lot of water in that, so it's gonna, continue to cook down um, and start to sweat in here, okay? So I'm gonna let, let that cook. And while that cooks, we're gonna talk about the rest of this. So the rest of this is, I've got a tomato here, I've got a bunch of tomatoes I actually put in my blender here, um, and I blended these tomatoes up. So you see what that looks like? Can you guys see that? It's really pretty, uh, beautiful pink, um, basically raw tomato, what I did so I took a tomato, five by six, you could use a Roma as well, and I quarter them, okay? And then I just put them in my Nutribullet. You can add just a touch of water so they, they blend. And I already had probably like four tomatoes in there, so that's like five. So let me finish pureeing these and we'll get it ready. Okay, okay, I'm back. And I've got my puree here. Now my puree is ready, so I'm gonna leave that right here, okay? And I'm gonna continue to stir this. And well, while we wait for this to cook down, we're gonna get this squash roasting, okay? So what I'm gonna do with that, is take this big spaghetti squash and I'm gonna cut it right down the center. Gotta be super careful when you're doing this. 
because these kind of things, you know, rolling around, you got a big, got a big knife, you can cut the heck out of yourself. So don't have the kids around and everybody's goofing around doing stuff. Take your time and do this right and nice, right? Um, and don't cut yourself. So what I want to do is cut through it gentle like this and that's it. Um, boom. And I like tap it and then that helps me to open it up. You see how that works? Very easy. Okay. Now I'm going to take my bowl here and my seeds and I'm going to kind of just scoop out these seeds like this. Now, if you want to use these seeds, you can. I know a lot of people love pumpkin seeds and they like to take these and wash this out and get all the seeds out and then just roast them with a little olive oil. You can do that. It's fine. I'm not going to do that today but because I've been doing so many pumpkin things. I've got all kinds of seeds around. So uh, I'm not going to do that. But you guys can feel free to do that. Okay. So you guys can see how easy this is, right? Take a nice heavy spoon. I guess I like to take a good, nice, heavy tablespoon, kitchen tablespoon, and then I kind of just scrape at it like this. Now, spaghetti squash is a really great vegetable. I mean, it gives you this feeling like you have these spaghetti noodles, right? And it's really fun like that. So um, it's going to make a really kind of a fun dish when people are eating this because they have the tomato sauce, everything that's going to feel almost like they have uh, spaghetti, right? but it's all vegetarian, which is really super fun. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big pan like I have here. And I'm going to put this in my pan. Okay. And then with this, I'm going to put some olive oil in here like this. And then I'm going to put some maple syrup. So I use really good maple syrup for just a little sweetness. Okay, and that's going to kind of be in this, uh, in the center of this, and it's going to be really nice, okay? And now I'm going to sprinkle it with salt, like this, okay? And I'm going to take a little bit of water. Now I'm going to put water in two spots. I'm going to put water on the bottom, so the bottom of this squash doesn't burn in here. Sometimes if you don't put water on the bottom, it'll burn like that. And I stick a little bit of water inside this, like this, too. And I'm going to grab some butter, okay? I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. Okay, I'm back. I've got some butter here. And I want to take probably like, I want to take a nice tablespoon of butter for each one of these to give it a little richness, right? So we'll put a little bit of butter in here. This is vegetarian. It's not vegan. If you wanted to make it vegan, just leave the butter out. It's fine. You can just use olive oil. And just like this, we're going to throw this in the oven and roast this at 350 for about, it's probably going to take about an hour, okay? or at least 45 minutes to an hour at 350. So let me put this in the oven. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back now. And I want to kind of just turn these up. You can see how these all these vegetables are cooking down nicely in here, right? They've sauteed down the, the, the carrots, the onions, the celery, all losing their, their, uh, their juice there. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of wine, probably like a half cup of wine, okay? And I'm going to turn this up and I'm going to get this thing going, okay? Now, after we put in our wine, we're going to cook that down just a touch. And I'm going to cook this wine out. We'll cook this wine out for a minute or two to get kind of the alcohol out of it. And then once that reduces down, I'm going to go ahead and add in my tomato. So I'll see you back in about two to three minutes. Okay, guys, it's been a couple, about a couple minutes now. The, the, the wine is cooking down. The, vegetable, the water from the vegetables is cooking out. And what we're going to do at this point is put our tomato in. So our tomato, with that little bit of water that was in there, all that goes in there. We don't worry about any of that. This thing's pureed. That thing's so smooth. It's got no seeds, nothing in there. Now, if you have a lot of tomatoes, um, you can add, like, I would say this is going to take, like, eight tomatoes. I only had, like, five. And I want a little bit more sauce. So I'm going to add in, I've got a little bit of canned uh, tomato puree. So it's just whole tomatoes that I've blended up uh, from a can. Okay. And you can put it in there. That. that way you get a little bit of fresh tomato and you get a little canned tomato taste. 
It's really nice. So we'll add that in. You don't have to have this. You can use just fresh tomatoes. Use like eight tomatoes, blend up. Uh, if, you, if you don't have fresh tomatoes and you wanna just use canned tomatoes, use like a whole big can of tomatoes and that's it. So this bolognese now just needs to cook. So it needs to come down very slow over a long period of time. Uh, probably like, I like to do it just as long as the pumpkin, 30 minutes to an hour, just to really let it come down slow. Uh, don't boil it away, just let it simmer down uh, slow and cook together. Let it like all come together as one beautiful piece, okay? And then we'll taste it, we'll re-season it when we get towards the end. So I'll see you guys back in around 45 minutes. Hey guys, okay, we're back. I've got my squash. Look at these, how beautiful like these look. Okay, they're nice and moist. The uh, squash looks so pretty like that. It's gonna be great for your presentation on the tables, right? And then in here, I've got my, uh, my bolognese. So my beautiful bolognese is right here. Um, you can see it's nice and tight. There's a little bit of juice in there, which is fine. We want it to be, you know, we don't want it to be pasty dry. You want it to be nice and moist like this. And this really doesn't have, there's not a lot of, I don't put a lot of butter in this because of the fact that we're gonna add um, cheese to this and it's gonna make it rich anyway with the cheese. So I just leave the bolognese like this. It's just a really flavorful, I'm gonna try a little bite. Mm. What you're looking for at this point is just flavor. You want tomatoey, salty, all those herbs and all the flavor in there. And I've got some parsley here. And just to finish this off, I'm going to chop my parsley up. Super fine. This is about a half a bunch. Half a bunch of Italian flat leaf parsley. I like Italian flat leaf parsley. I do not like curly parsley. It does not have the same flavor. This Italian flat leaf parsley is a much more elegant flavor than this. So I'll leave this a little bit extra here for my presentation. I can just put a little on top, right? You know, maybe I'll save a little bit more for that. Okay. Mm. So you can see how this nicely comes together. Just the, I'm heating, I just have this a little bit hotter now because I want um, all, my, all my bolognese to be hot before we go ahead and finish the roasting process. So this part of this, you guys, you could do ahead like this and then like warm the, the filling up like I'm doing. So you could do this two days before. You can roast these pumpkins before, let them sit in the fridge roasted like this. Make sure that you wrap them nice and make sure that the juice stays in there with them, okay? Don't throw that juice from the, the um, butter, the olive oil and the uh, maple syrup we put in there. Don't throw that away. This, uh, if it's cold in the fridge, you can have it two or three or five days old. Uh, you just want to warm it up before we put it back together. So. It looks like it's nice and warm now because, hmm, the fresh parsley part really kicks, kicks it up. So with that, I take my, my uh, beautiful um, squash here. You see how the water in here is gone? I'm going to pour some more water. Why? Because we don't want the bottom of this to burn. It almost... You know, the water makes it steam a little bit and do that. Now, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to put my bolognese right here in the middle of my, oh, shoot. Try not to drop it in there and make a huge mess, too. Okay, you want to be very gentle with this, right? I think each one of these is good for three people. If you see how nice this looks, right? Look at this, right? That's beautiful, right? And then we're gonna fill this one up too. So this bolognese, if you have extra bolognese, you can either make more squash to fill more, or you can just put this in a container. You can freeze it if you want, or you can just toss this with pasta. It's always nice as a pre-dinner with your with this, or you know, have it as leftovers one day, because uh, this. This beautiful mushroom bolognese stays really nice. Okay, now we've got our beautiful squash all stuffed like this. Look how beautiful these look. Now I stick them close together so they kind of help each other stand straight up. Okay, then I'm gonna take a little bit of Parmesan. 
Okay, so I've got some grated Parmesan here. You can use Parmesan or Pecorino Romano, whatever you want. Okay, hold on. This one I'm trying to balance it because it's a little bit like, like it's yeah, see how it has like a, the bottom of it wasn't perfectly flat. So I'm trying to keep it from leaking all over the place. Okay, like that. Okay, now we've got our, we've got our, I'm gonna try maybe flip it this way. Let me see how this goes. This one's nice and straight, but this is the one I'm having a problem with. So I wanna kind of lead it, maybe lean it like, I'm trying to find a spot. See how I found a spot now? Now it sits flat. That's what you're looking to do. Now, I have some grated mozzarella here. So you have some beautiful grated mozzarella for the top. And I'm just going to stick that all over this baby. Okay. And then we're going to pop this, this, this uh, squash back in the oven. And we're going to let it roast in there at 350 again for probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes to get it really nice and bubbly with the cheese, okay? So all of our cheese is on there. We got Parmesan, or you can use Pecorino Romano, a nice, some nice uh, mozzarella like this. If you don't want to use grated mozzarella, you could put slices of mozzarella. You could put slices of burrato on top whatever makes you happy. And then we're going to throw this in the oven. We're going to give it about, I don't know, probably 20 minutes. And I'm going to show you what it looks like at the end. So I'll see you back in 20 minutes. Hey guys. Okay. We got it back out of the oven. Look how beautiful this looks. So at this point, I probably put a little bit more cheese on the top or you can just serve it with some cheese around. Um, and that's it. Um, a little, little Parmesan, a little Pecorino like this on the top. And then you can put a little bit of, um, fresh chopped parsley like this, okay? And that's it. We have a beautiful dish here. Um, roasted spaghetti squash with this mushroom bolognese. Um, it's got just all this great flavor in it. Um, not really very hard to do. And the cool part is you could take this actually to parties because uh, you can have two or three different uh, disposable foil pans and just put a bunch of these in there. I think each one could probably be, if, if it's just stuff going with other things as well, each one of these could feed four people. So you have at least eight right here. You could do another two and you would have 16 people that you would have plenty for. And it's really fun to kind of scrape this squash and get the... Um, Get that spaghetti feel going with the bolognese. Simple dish. I hope you guys like it. Try it at home. If you have any questions, make sure you leave comments and ask me whatever you want. I'll see you back in the kitchen soon. I'm Chef T-Max.